All right then, gang. So first of all, what is object-oriented programming, or OOP for short? Well, basically, it's just a coding methodology. It's a style of coding which relies a lot on the use of objects. And that's really good because it means that we can tap into all of the different benefits that objects give us as developers. So it's going to make our code much more modular and reusable. It makes our code easier to maintain or extend in the future. And it's also going to mean that it's much easier to debug when things go wrong. Now, I want to make one thing clear. Despite all of these different benefits, using an object oriented approach is not always the best approach to every single project that you create. For example, if you have a really, really simple project, which doesn't use an awful lot of code, it might be considered a bit overkill and you might be adding unnecessary complexity to your projects. But as your code gets bigger and bigger, then the benefits of using this kind of methodology are really going to shine through. Now, before you go any further, I just want to make sure you're all up to speed as to where you should be so far. I would expect you to have a basic understanding of PHP and know how to get a PHP environment up and running on your computer so you can preview your work in a browser, for example. If you don't know that, and if you don't know the basics of PHP, things like variables, functions, submitting forms, etc., then I've got a full beginner's PHP series on this channel, which you should probably start with. Don't start here because I am going to assume you know all of the basics of PHP and how to run it on your computer. So I will leave the link to that PHP series for beginners down below. So go and check out that first, then come back here. For the rest of us, in this course, we're going to be starting at the start of object oriented programming. So we're going to look at classes, adding properties and methods to those classes, and then looking at access modifiers, things like private public, protected, and also getters and setters and the many benefits that they offer. Then we'll be looking at things like inheritance, static properties, magic methods, and loads more. And then finally, we'll put everything together to create a custom form validation class at the end. All right, my friends. So as usual, I've created all of the course files for this series. They're right here on GitHub and you can find them at this repo, Object Oriented PHP. This link is going to be left right down below. And I've done a separate branch for each individual lesson in this series, because at the end of the day, every lesson has different code. So if you want to see the code for lesson five, for example, go to the branch drop down, choose lesson five, and you should be able to see that code right here. So I'm also going to be using Visual Studio Code as my editor of choice in this series. You can download that at code.visualstudio.com and then click on this download button right here. But you don't have to use this. You can use whichever code editor you prefer, Sublime, Atom, or even Notepad if you're a minimalist. So inside VS Code, I've already created an index.php file, and that is inside a tutorials folder, which can be found inside the htdocs folder in Xamp. So htdocs is where we're going to place all of our code that we can preview in a browser. Again, if you don't follow this, then make sure you check out my PHP for Beginners series. First of all, the link to that are right down below. But anyway, we have our index file right here inside the tutorials folder, and that looks something like this. A simple PHP script at the top, which just echoes Hello Ninjas, and then some HTML code at the bottom, just some boilerplate code for later. So now if I open XAMP, I can go to Start under Apache, and then if I go to Admin, then we're going to get this screen over here. This is the default dashboard page that XAMP throws up when you first start it. And now I'm going to replace that with Tutorials, and that's going to find the index.php file and show us this thing right here. Hello, ninjas. So there we go. That is our setup all sorted now. And in the very next video, we'll start to talk about object oriented programming in PHP. Like always, guys, if you do like the videos, please don't forget to like it down below, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the very next tutorial.